Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with another of our portfolio review series. I get requests every week to review stock portfolios and while I don't do individual consulting anymore, I wanted to help you out there so I figured this would be a great way to do that. And even though this isn't your portfolio, this is going to be a great look into that process to see as I review these portfolios and how it might apply to your stocks. I'll also be answering questions directly from the investor towards the end of the video so stick around because I know a lot of you are going to have the same questions. If you want your portfolio reviewed, join our weekly newsletter with the link I'll leave in the description below. It's totally free and you'll see all the news, trends, and stocks I'm following each week. And then once a month, I'll put a call out for portfolios and give you the email to send those into along with your questions. So again, look for that link in the description below. By the way, if you do send in your portfolio, understand it could be a few weeks before I can get to it and create a video and that you give me permission to give you whatever anonymous name I want. And today's portfolio is from Anthony Fremont, one of the most famous episodes of The Twilight Zone. Now the portfolio is actually from a 16 year old out there in the Bowtie Nation, but I picked Anthony from The Zone because he's got a superpower. And in fact, all investors have a superpower that we'll talk about today. Today, along with how they should invest. I'll be using our portfolio tracker spreadsheet that I developed to review the portfolio. It's a great tool, not just for tracking your investments, but also some great goal planning exercises that we'll look at. So look for the link in the description below. Now, Anthony is 16 and says he's been investing since age seven, but hasn't really had much income to invest until now. He's tutoring now and wants to invest more to add to his $3,000 portfolio. He's planning on retiring at 60, but his main goal right now is just to buy a home and live comfortably. And I love that. Starting investing so early is a superpower that too many of us just don't use until it's too late. To see how powerful this is, here are four investors starting at different ages, 16, 26, 36, and 46. Each investor puts $100 a month in their account and earns the average 10% annual return on stocks. And look at that difference. As little as $100 a month can make you a millionaire if you start investing as a teenager. The 16-year-old investor here putting $100 in stocks each month will have over $1.4 million just by the age of 65. But look at how quickly that superpower fades. Wait until you're 26 to start and you're gonna be left with less than half that amount, just over $500,000. And waiting until 36 means less than $200,000. Now, most of us don't have much control over this, right? When we started investing, it is what it is. And it sucks that, that I didn't get serious about investing until my early 30s, but that's just how it is. But there is still an opportunity here. Get your kids started investing. If you don't have kids, help your nieces and nephews get started investing. Share this video or the channel out with your friends with kids and just make sure that they have that power of compound interest, what Einstein called the eighth wonder of the world. So let's look at Anthony's portfolio, what he can do to invest his money and maybe some opportunities opportunities in his investments. I've put his four exchange traded funds in the spreadsheet here. I just put the ticker symbols in along with the number of shares and the price paid and then you click load stock data here. The spreadsheet is then going to automatically search the database that we use on the internet for the name and all this information to, to give you a great overview and analysis of your portfolio. We see here that Anthony has just over half his $3,000 invested across four ETFs. That's two stock market funds and two real estate funds here. He has the total stock market fund, which invests across the U.S. stocks available, as well as an international fund, which means he's basically got the entire global stock market. He also has this U.S. real estate fund, an ETF that holds shares of real estate companies, along with an international real estate fund. And that's a great core portfolio. Um, basically, Anthony's got the most diversified portfolio he can have around stocks and real estate. He's going to get that stock market and real estate returns on his money without even having to pick stocks. Now, if we scroll down, we also see he's got about $1,200 in a Fidelity money market account waiting to be invested. Now, normally, I wouldn't suggest anybody have 40% of their portfolio in cash. It's worked out this year, and it's going to give Anthony the opportunity to invest that money in stocks that, that have been hammered. But Nobody really needs more than 25 or 30% of their money in cash, especially someone with such a long time horizon. I'd usually say keep this cash part down to 10 to 20% at the most. You see, an important thing we're going to talk about is the longer you have until you need the money, the more risk you can take with your investments. Uh, someone with just five or 10 years left to retirement wouldn't want a lot of money invested in stocks, especially some of those risky growth stocks that have been hit so hard this year because it might not be enough time to let those stocks rebound from a crash and, and you never know when the next crash is going to come. 
Someone like Anthony, though, with decades left to invest, uh, he can wait out any bear market, basically. That's the superpower. He knows any stock he buys right now is, is going to have that time to recover and, and reach those new highs by the time he wants to use that money. Now, since he only has ETFs here and no individual stocks, the Portfolio Overview tab isn't going to tell him much. Uh, as he adds individual stocks, though, it's going to track how much he has in those different asset classes, as well as in each sector, really help him diversify his portfolio. I would like to see him put some of that money to work, though, buying a few more ETFs or even individual stocks with that money market funds that he's holding. Uh, stocks are already down 25% from the peak, and while there's a good chance prices still fall, fall a little bit further, uh, for someone with so much time to invest, it's the perfect time to take advantage of those discounts that, that we're already seeing in the market. Out of that $3,000 portfolio, I would still hold maybe five or 600 back in cash waiting to see if stocks fall further, but, but that's still going to give him 600 or so to invest now and put it to work. My favorite tab on the spreadsheet here is this investing goals tab, and it's extremely helpful in, in seeing how all of this comes together to reach your goals. I put Anthony's age in here and years to retirement. Now I'm using 65 as a retirement age, but you can change this up for different goals. If your main goal like Anthony's is to buy a house, you might want to do maybe 10 years and put in 10 here to see what that number shows you. Anthony is just starting to invest more of his new income, so we're starting out at $200 a month. Again, you can play around with this and see how much you need to invest to reach your goals. And what the spreadsheet is doing here, all automatically as you put in these numbers, it's going to show you the current portfolio amount that you entered in that portfolio tab. Then it's going to use the historical returns on each asset class, so stocks, bonds, and real estate and estimates how much money you'll have at the end of that, that period, at the end of the time, if you keep investing that same amount each month. So here, if Anthony keeps investing $200 a month for the next 49 years, at that historical return on his current investments, he should have just over $1.5 million by the time he reaches 65. Anthony actually has the opportunity to have much more than that. The spreadsheet right now is assuming that he keeps that 40% uh, in money market funds that he put in the spreadsheet like he has now. So, so the return is estimating is much lower than if he invested some of that money in stocks. Anthony really doesn't have any expenses right now, but we're going to estimate $6,500 in retirement. He wants to live large, but he can play around with this number as well. Uh, along with the estimated tax rate and any social security, this is going to show you how much you need uh, each year from your investments to pay for those monthly expenses. Then you just type in the percentage that you're going to withdraw from your portfolio. Most common here is going to be 4%, uh, but you can change this around 5%, maybe even less, uh, maybe 3%. And the spreadsheet is going to tell you how much you're going to need in retirement to meet those expenses. So here we see if Anthony wants to spend $6,500 a month in retirement, he's paying 10% taxes on his capital gains and collecting about $18,000 a year from Social Security, he'll need a portfolio of $1.7 million to cover his expenses. And this is just a great way to compare the track you're on right now with how much you'll need. Even though it's estimated Anthony will come up short with $1.5 million by age 65, that's only on investing $200 a month and almost half of it in money market of funds. Uh, if he were to invest more or invest more of that in stocks, the return on this is going to be high enough that he's going to have more than enough money by retirement. It's a great tool for analyzing your portfolio and what you need to do to reach your goals. So look for that link below. Now I want to answer some of Anthony's questions because I know a lot of you out there are going to have some of the same questions about investing as a teenager. Anthony's first question was, how much should I invest? And that's one of the most common questions I get from any age group. Uh, but instead of this, I want you not to think about it as how much should you invest, but how much will get you to your goals. You see, too many investors follow some rule like investing 20% of their income or, or a dollar amount, and it just means nothing to them. And when the budget gets tight, saving 20% just goes out the window because it's a totally arbitrary number. Instead, I want you to create those goals around what you want to do with your money and the mental picture that goes along with that, what your like is going to be like when you reach those goals, you know, where you're going to be at, the people that are going to be around you, the things you're going to do. You're going to use this to see how much you'll need to cover those expenses. Uh, you can use that spreadsheet here or an online calculator to, to find the portfolio you need and what you need to invest each month to get there. And even more importantly, though, this is going to be so important because when that budget does get tight or you just want to spend the money rather than save it and invest it, you're going to have that mental picture of your goals to motivate you to save it instead. You'll know what you're investing for, and that's going to keep you driving forward. 
You know, another question I get a lot is how old do you need to be to open an investing account? It's a great question. And while you do need to be 18 to open an account yourself, you can get a parent or a guardian to open what's called a custodial account before that. Uh, these are like joint accounts with your parent's name and management rights on it. But when you turn 18, then that parent's name is dropped off and it just becomes a, an account like any other, solely yours. It's a great way to get started early and, and takes less than 15 minutes to open up these kinds of accounts with any broker. Anthony also asks, should teenagers trade stocks? No, absolutely not. And I wouldn't normally recommend any investors trade stocks, but even less for investors. Now, that's not to say that you cannot make money trading stocks because there are successful uh, investors out there. But every successful stock trader I know, every single one without fail is a full-time trader. Okay, They've spent at least six, six to eight hours a day watching their charts, their trading screens, uh, looking for that next trade, another two or four hours working through strategies and, and reading charts. So it is definitely a full-time job. Tr folks, trading is a full-time job. And if you're not willing to commit that full-time uh, commitment to it, then you're just the money you lose is going to be going to fund those full-time traders uh, and their and their occupation. You know, most people just don't have the time or the commitment to really do that to 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 commit to real trading and especially not teenagers. Click on the video to the right for the seven dividend stocks that will make your car payment. Seven cars and seven stocks that will put you behind the wheel. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.